Yep, there's plastic in your sea salt. Karmic justice comes swift with Mother Nature, as plastic waste we've been throwing in the ocean is now coming back to us, literally, via the food we eat. Microplastic particles typically flow into the ocean, since they're often too small to be filtered out by sewage treatment plants. The tiny pieces of plastic are mistaken for food and ingested by fish and other sea creatures. Seafood meant for human consumption often contain these particles, and now a new study shows that salt may also be a vehicle for plastic contamination. Researchers studied sea salt extracted from eight different countries and found that nearly all were contaminated with 72 foreign particles. Only the one from France was found to be free of contaminants. 30 of the particles were microplastics, 17 were pigments that may have once been plastic, and 4 were dust particles. 21 could not be identified. Scientists say the current concentration of plastic is low and won't affect human health. But if plastic pollution continues, those levels may increase and potentially become detrimental to our well-being. So for now, maybe ease up on the salt, and more importantly, reduce, reuse, recycle. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. In case you needed more reasons not to pollute the oceans, here's a look at how bad it's gotten. New report says plastic will outweigh fish in the oceans by 2050. By 2050, plastic rubbish in the oceans will outweigh fish, according to a new report by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation released at the World Economic Forum in Davos this week. The United States, Europe, and Asia together account for 85% of plastics production, roughly split between the US and Europe on one side and Asia on the other. Some 95% of plastic packaging produced each year is lost to the economy after a single use. Out of all the plastic produced every year, only 5% is recycled effectively. Around 40% is buried in landfills, and about 32% reaches the oceans. This corresponds to dumping the contents of one garbage truck into the ocean every minute. The production of plastic, which now stands at around 311 million tons a year, is expected to quadruple by 2050. This will bring the ratio of plastic to fish in the ocean, calculated according to weight, from 1 to 5 to more than 1 to 1. The report urges people to take action and to rethink the way we use and recycle plastic. It also suggests that manufacturers help reduce plastic waste by producing not only plastic that is reusable but also compostable plastics, a new generation of plastics that are biodegradable through composting. The Pacific Ocean is full of plastic waste. Initial results from the first aerial survey of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch suggest that ocean pollution is worse than we thought. The Ocean Cleanup Foundation is conducting a series of aerial surveys over an area of plastic accumulation in the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and California. Flying at low altitude and low speed, the survey uses LiDAR technology to analyze the density and frequency of plastic ocean debris. Recording the presence of debris larger than half a meter by one and a half meters, the crew found more than a thousand pieces of plastic during a two and a half hour test flight. The survey also aims to document discarded fishing nets known as ghost nets, which are difficult to detect and can ensnare marine life. Researchers from the Great Ocean Cleanup said understanding the scope of the problem would help future efforts to remove trash from the Pacific. 500 sea lions dead, possibly after eating tons of plastic. Some 500 dead sea lions were discovered decomposing on a beach 250 miles north of the Peruvian capital, Lima, possibly after ingesting massive amounts of plastic, polluting the waters. The North Pacific Gyre, one of the world's largest ocean gyres, is often referred to as the Pacific Trash Vortex due to the high concentrations of floating plastic debris. Due to rotational currents, trash is captured from across the Pacific Ocean, including the coastal waters off North America and Japan and then is gradually moved towards the North Pacific Gyre Center where it becomes trapped. The Pacific Trash Vortex is estimated to be around 2,200 kilometers long and 800 kilometers wide, almost three times the size of Spain and Portugal combined. The vortex is made up of some hundred million tons of plastic, including large objects or disintegrated objects and particles. About half of them float atop the ocean surface, while the remaining, heavier half, can be found in the water columns below it or along the bottom of the ocean. The United Nations Environment Program estimates that worldwide, each square mile of ocean water contains 46,000 pieces of garbage. Plastic does not biodegrade, meaning it does not break down into natural elements, 
Rather, it photogrades, gradually splitting into small, tiny particles. When small enough, it can be ingested by aquatic organisms and therefore is able to enter the food chain. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. So this is where the waste in the ocean ends up. Researchers say the Arctic Ocean has become the last stop for plastic waste dumped into the seas, and trash is now piling up in the once pristine waters. According to a study, warm surface currents bring plastic trash from densely populated coastlines up to the Arctic Ocean, where the waste becomes trapped. It's estimated that the trash stored in the Arctic Ocean currently accounts for about 3% of the 110 million tons of plastic waste in the oceans. There are approximately 300 billion tiny pieces of plastic waste in the surface water, and it's highly likely there's even more trash on the sea floor. The researchers say their findings reveal only the beginning of plastic waste migration to the Arctic Ocean, and warn the consequences will be felt at a greater scale in the Arctic ecosystem. <laughs>